music. Beautiful Maltese, thank you for being with us this morning on feeding week, feeding day. I'm really enjoying Uncle Bill Boa's beautiful inheritance. It does need some shepherding, but I'm enjoying the joy of these beautiful animals. It's just so wonderful to be here. And I'm looking forward to seeing Jerry though joining us at some point. We'll put these out ready for feeding, so we won't be doing too much with the adult snakes today because it's feeding day. Although I must give you a beautiful update on the locks. The Jared, Athena, and the Pied, Athena. Let me show you. I believe they've locked Jared. They're out of lock at the moment, which is perfect. Aren't they just so content? Do you think we should put them back ready for feeding? I think we should. Well done Elvis, you've been an absolute star. Beautiful. Revealing the secrets of the ringers. Is he lovely Jared? Isn't he just beautiful? Let's put him back, Elvis. Enjoy the shires, the peace, the joy the contentment, the water, the food. Prepare for a lovely feeding because Komodo Baggins will be feeding tonight, Jared, with your help, of course. And it will be an absolute privilege to do so. I shall bring on some magic to bring on these lovely animals. So we take that off and we take this tag off for next week. And this is the tags that Uncle Bill Boa set up for us to use. Yellow means breeding. Let's see Buttercup and, and Joker. Shall we see how they're doing? Again, pied combos. We're going for the pieds and the clowns, Jared. Double heads with pastel thrown in for good measure. And this guy has locked multiple locks to her, so... How's it looking in there, Jared? Are they locked? No. Is it okay to remove? I'm smelling the hormones a mile away. I don't even put my nose in there. And that's what's helping all the other boys, encouraging them on. So a big thank you to Rob for teaching us the rhythm of the room. Isn't he just lovely? It's going to be the daddy to some wonderful babies this year, Jared. I'm so pleased that we got him from Debbie. Isn't he just lovely? Now let's put him home. Joker, you've got a lovely shire waiting for you as well. Welcome back. Enjoy your home. Thank you so much for your journey and adventure into the land of Pides and the Ringers. May you eat well and sustain your body through the breeding season. And we shall clean these legs, Jared. And well done to Buttercup. How's she looking in there, Jared? Can you see just how many hormones are floating around in there? It's incredible, isn't it, Jared? So we'll give her a really good clean. That's been a very, very successful lock. Oh, being in the Shire is such a beautiful place, Jared. I love being here. It's so cold outside, it's snowing. Yet in here, the tranquility, the peace, the stormy weather out doesn't affect us in here, Jared. It's every day's a holiday. And I just love being in the Shire. Although there will be a journey for me, I understand. And I shall learn more about my mission and my journey. That will unfold this week on our beautiful 
Lord of the Ring is weak. The next one we're going to look at is Titus, one of your father's favourites. Again, a true star, a true stud. He's been put with the Phantom, and we're hoping to produce Purple Passions, Jared. Mojave and Phantom make the most gorgeous animals. In fact, let's have a look at our Purple Passion to show you what we're trying to produce. We won't take her out because she's in shed. Now this is Jess's snake I bought her. I can't remember where she is, but Jared. He's showing me with his feet. I'm not to that end, my feet stand on firm ground. I can't quite get up there because of my hip. But what do you think of my beautiful feet, Jared? You like it? Looks special. Yes. A hobbit has it's an to... improvement, actually. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you see, a hobbit, as I am, a halfling or a dwarf, whatever you may like to call me, I may be small, I may be a small time breeder, but I, it's not the size of the breeder that counts, it's the size of the heart within the breeder that really counts. So, let's see what else we've got here. I was going to show you the Purple Passion, her name is Stormy, she's probably still in shed. She is, believe it or not, in shed. But she's almost ready to shed, Jared. When an animal sheds, I see that they go quite dark and then just the day before they shed, they lighten up again. Would you like to expand, Jared, with your great knowledge and wisdom as to why that is the case? They go in blue, so they get some fluid that goes in between their two layers of skin. Uh -huh. Their new layer and their old layer. Yes. And then that fluid disappears and their top layer of skin comes out. Oh, and they get a new layer. Oh, Sam. May I call you Sam, my gardener? Nope. My beloved friend? Nope. <laughs> Not your you're gardener. So, you're so knowledgeable. <laughs> oh, I love you, Sam. Your true friend. Play the part of Sam, if not just verbally, though this week, Jared. It would be so much appreciated by Komodo Baggins. What was the next name? <laughs> Oh, we're on Titus. So this is what we're hoping to produce, those beautiful passions. And I see, let's see if they've unlocked and we can put them in their separate shires. Plenty going on, Jared, though. Can you see the poo and the shed in the corner? Are they unlocked? Oh, they've had a night they can never forget. Titus is looking wonderful and he's just about to go into shed, so we just squeezed him in in the nick of time. Titus, she was just so amazing. Here he is, isn't he beautiful? Absolutely superb specimen. And he's feeding so well and eating so well, Jared. Or Sam. Oh, he, Jared. Loves, he loves this. So in he goes. No, he doesn't want to go in. He wants to play for a bit longer. He wants to play with Komodo. Are you enjoying being out? Let's try you again. There we go. <laughs> He's lovely, Jack. We shall hopefully feed him. He's just about to go into shed. So if you see an animal that is just about to go into shed, then you would put a replacement tag green on to his mouth. There we go. And then let's have a look at Jade. While you have a look at Jade, I'm just going to wash my hands. Shall we look at Venus, our pastel twilight and the power boy? Now we believe they've locked twice. Let's see if they've unlocked. And again, can you see the shed, Jared? They look like they're still being romantic. Do you no, think they were locked this morning, but they've let, they've let go now. Do you think we should allow them to lock further, or shall no, we? They've already done the job. Fine. Oh, 
truly beautiful animals. So this is, we thought this one was a girl, didn't we? It turns out to be a boy and we're so grateful he is now because he's got the powers within him. He's just gorgeous, he's feeding well, breeding well, first time breeder. So we're only putting him to one girl this year, we're not going to work him hard at all. It's really important to look after your young boys. And as they get bigger like Joker, then you can put them up to six girls. But these little ones really should only have one, in my opinion, maybe two. They're lovely. So let's put him back. Thank you Bambi, you've been an absolute star for us. I hope you've enjoyed your night with Venus. She certainly is out of this world. Enjoy your Shire. And again, we take off the tags and look at Venus, Jared. She's wanting to come out and display for the camera. She could probably start to smell the rats building. And you're a gorgeous mother. She's mothered so many beautiful hatchlings for us, Jared, hasn't she? And did you see the video yesterday that we put the goby into the pewters and what they do? Have you seen the new gene, Jared? I haven't seen that one, no. I'd recommend it because we could find her goby, which is like an extreme gene going into the pewters, are heavenly. Oh, look. oh look, at her, look at her, Jared. She's reluctant to go back into her shire. She wants to explore. We won't unnecessarily push her back in. We'll let her enjoy the music and enjoy the peaceful, relaxing tone of the shire. In fact, she's smelling her husband and she's also smelling the banana. I think she does want to go. And now she's ready to go back into her home. Venus, thank you for starring in today's film. We love you and we're grateful for you. And we look forward to you one day producing another clutch for us. And now this takes me to Flame. And Hamlin has suggested some names for her offspring, Jared. He thinks that Flame babies could be called something very special. Have you heard of Smog? Smog or Smaug? Smaug. The dragon, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And this is what he's suggesting. Apparently it's a drink as well. <laughs> so maybe we'll use your name, Hamlin. Thank you for your suggestion. We love your humour. And look, what's going on in here? Oh yes. The Desert Ghost is having a jacuzzi. After locking. He locked, by the way. I think they're still potentially locked. Are they still locked? Should we leave them in? Peace. Yeah. Yes, we'll leave them in. Look at the girl. Look, she's locking, making love. She's cooling her follicles and he's having a jacuzzi, so we're not going to separate these lovers. The Jedi forces are teaching us, aren't they, Jared? To leave things when they need to be left. And hopefully we will learn more the arts of the Jedi forces. So we shall leave Flame to enjoy her lovely romance. And flame is in the air, Jared. Flame is in the air. So, I think that is all our pairings, I believe, Jared. So we've covered all the pairings. The next thing is to find out what gifts we've had from the rings. Because this is Lord of the Ringers week. Should we go to the light box, Jared, and see what we can find? Shall we? We have gifts from Uncle Bilbo via the rings. Let's go to the table and see what messages he has for us today. messages and perhaps two parts but first let's just see what we have from the first scroll oh that's lovely we have a message <clears throat> one of your top subscribers Jared Stephen Beckett 
who is a massive, massive Lord of the Rings fan, who inspired us for this week. He suggested that Paul should play the part of Frodo, which I think was a wonderful suggestion. And he also suggests that Richard at Predator BP should play the part of Gandalf, which I think is another good suggestion. So maybe if Richard's watching and you're game, you'd like to join us for a collab. That would be lovely. We'd love that, Richard. And of course, he's also encouraging us as hobbits to join forces together. And he's suggesting that there is strength in the hobbits or the hobbyists joining together. And he wants us to demonstrate this from my daughter's beautiful devotional when she was just 17. And she was Bethany, my beautiful daughter. She taught her young women in her church environment the power of being unified. And at that time they were welcoming in lots of, lots of young women into their organisation from the ages of 12 to 18. And each of these pencils represents either a hobbit or possibly a dwarf or possibly an elf or even a human and possibly even our snakes and animals. And it could represent so many things. It could represent the love in the relationships, the family, so many things. And as we bring them all together, you can see the beautiful colors and the palettes and the beautiful artistry that can be created from these. But unfortunately, the dark side will want to attack and try to break us down and stop us from progressing. And this can come in so many forms, as I know that you've covered over the last couple of weeks. Bullying on, high, on cyber, bullying on YouTube, bullying on Facebook. And alas, I've seen so many souls hurt and upset and withdrawn because of this bullying. So when it happens, one of the greatest defences that we could possibly do, and we do this here in the Shire, is we do not allow one person to stand alone. Because if you allow one person to stand alone, the forces of this world do not necessarily have to exert too much effort to try to break us. Alas, this is sad. Small pressure can cause deep hurt and pain. By small things, great things are brought about, both for good and for evil. So, what I would say is you join together, and we have a wonderful community of <clears throat> over 412 subscribers on our channel. And as we join together in strength, when the evil forces of these bullies that try to attack us which can come in lots of different ways. And alas, although we had the temple cleansing, I have experienced further bullying on a not so public way, but in a more private way, on one FaceTime and also unfortunately on one email that came. I won't mention who they are, they know who they are. And it's so sad that they see things in such a distorted way and they judge and cast stones despite the message of love and not patronising but genuine love and we have no plans to monetize. we have no plans to make money from this channel the real joy is the peace of the Shire the joy of working together and building a strong community with upright values and standards that will take our hobby and the hobbits to the next level of joy and working together in synergy so, as we combine forces and the evil orcs, goblins and dark black wizards out there who try their hardest to combine and break and they will give us their very best anger, hate, jealousy, envy all the characteristics that are built within the ring that wants to control and have power over us hobbyists and over this beautiful, beautiful hobby 
and they will exert so much power, but they will not have the power to break us. As much as I am giving this my best, together we are united. Together we can defeat those who plan to destroy us. Good will always triumph over evil, Jared. And we can apply these principles not just to our hobby, but to our families, our businesses, our loved ones, our friends. Together, we will be strong. Divided, we will be easy targets. So if anyone witnesses or sees bullying any degree, rally the troops, come together and protect one another. And we will be able to get through this challenge together. So thank you again to Steve Beckett and to my daughter Bethany for providing such wonderful inspiration and wonderful power in this message today. This now leads me on nicely to explore the first ring, which is the silver ring, to see what further message that we have from my uncle, Gilbo. I'm still learning about my new role in this stewardship. He has given me these rings, I've got no idea why, but I've got to find out. So let's see, Jared, how much time do we have on the ticker? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. So let's just see, that one came up beautifully. So thank you. Oh, okay. Well, this is interesting. Bilbo wants me to learn the history of the ring, the gold ring. And he has referred me to a beautiful video which gives us the prologue of the ring. And we've just got time to share that with you. So at least you can see the background. So Jack, would you do me the honors and let's broadcast the making of the ring and what's behind the ring. The world is changed. I feel it in the water. I feel it in the earth. I smell it in the air. Much that once was is lost. For none now live who remember it. began with the forging of the great rings. Three were given to the elves, immortal, wisest and fairest of all beings. Seven to the dwarf lords, great miners and craftsmen of the mountain halls. And Within these rings was bound the strength and will to govern each race. But they were all of them deceived. For another ring was made. In the land of Mordor, in the fires of Mount Doom, the Dark Lord Sauron forged in secret a master ring to control all others. And into this ring he poured his cruelty, his malice, and his will to dominate all life. One ring to rule them all. One by one, the three lands of Middle-earth fell to the power of the ring. But there were some who resisted. A last alliance of men and elves marched against the armies of Mordor, and on the slopes of Mount Doom, they fought for the freedom of Middle-earth. Victory was near. 
but the power of the ring could not be undone. moment, when all hope had faded, that Isildur, son of the king, took up his father's sword. This gold ring was forged by the darkest of all lords. I'm deeply concerned now and deeply worried. Why would such a ring come into my hands? And how did my uncle get hold of this? This is the this is the thing that concerns me, Jared. I need some help here. I will need trusted friends like Sam and others to help me through this mission. Let's see what uh, Uncle Bilbo has said. How much time do we have, Jared? Two minutes. Two minutes. He said, don't fear. He says, not to put the gold ring on your finger, because that will draw the evil forces of this world. But to protect it and to keep it safe, you are the bearer of the ring to keep it out of the evil forces of this world. For when they discover it, they will try to use it to overthrow and to eliminate good people from this planet and some great hobbyists from this wonderful, wonderful hobby. So I must protect the ring and keep it safe. He said that a dear friend of his, who is a dear friend of mine, is coming. And this is the genetic wizard. And he hopefully will be here tomorrow, if not Wednesday. So he will give us further guidance, Jared, and further understanding. So thank you everybody for joining us this morning. I hope that you enjoy the snakes. We will give you some more snakes coming on part two. So stay with us and let's see how this story unfolds. Goodbye for now.